In today's video, the one thing that is making fat loss more sustainable. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today's video is going to be a little different than my normal video. I'm not answering a question from my Instagram. However, if you want, you can go here and uh, send me an Instagram direct message and we can talk about the questions going forward. But today's video, I want to talk about something that has been slapping me in the face. And I've said it multiple times this year to people that are close to me, my coaches that work for me, my clients, and that is how much more successful people have been coming out of a dieting phase. Uh, even myself, I've noticed this. And so I want to talk about the thing that has caused that and why I think it's going to be such a big impact going forward. Now, the first couple times I dieted down and did shows, there wasn't a lot of information about how to handle that post-show period. Things were talked about like reverse dieting a few years later, but even those were difficult for me because the last thing I wanted to do when a show was over was be so meticulous with tracking and eating the same foods. I really wanted to just have more freedom. Coming out of a fat loss phase where you restrict calories and raise cardio, that's kind of what you're burnt out on doing is being so, you know, for me, being so diligent with tracking and being so specific, you just want a little bit of mental freedom. So what has changed? What has made coming out of a show, coming out of a dieting phase, even easier and even better? Well, it's called a diet break. And what I've noticed is, in years past, there would be about a 50-50 chance that a competitor, a client of mine, would struggle post-show. And by struggle, I mean struggle with food, struggle with hunger, with the guilt of overeating, with the guilt of putting on body fat too rapidly. And what I've found is that it's no longer 50-50. I'd say it's about 5% or less of my clients are really struggling with that. And some of that can still be associated with something not related to diet. Sometimes you just deal with some mental struggles or some stress. But what I find is that this strategy, and I'm gonna talk about the specifics of taking diet breaks during a dieting phase and bringing calories back up before you end the dieting phase, it changes the game. It changes the way our bodies respond. It changes our hunger signals. It changes kind of our, our desire to kind of overdo it and overeat. You see, in years past as a competitor, what I would tend to notice is a lot of the competitors would get close to show day and they would just be counting day, down the minutes until they could go out and eat and stuff their faces and talk about all the foods they could have. But what I found is through two different approaches, the diet break and the linear progressive load going into the show, we have really kind of found a, I hate to use the word, but a hack for how to improve a contestant's and general fat loss a client's results after the diet is over. And I want to talk a little bit about why. So let's talk about how things typically go. In the old days, you would pick say 12 or 16 weeks and you would go, this is prep. And every single day of that prep, you were doing cardio, restricting calories. You were on this very kind of strict meal plan. And all you thought about towards the end when body fat was low and energy was low and food was annoying was getting to the end so that you could go back to being normal. Well, what we tend to do now is take a little bit longer with our fat loss phases, and we include something called a diet break. Now, before you get confused, I wanna explain what a diet break is. A diet break is not a break from dieting. It's not a break from tracking. It's not a break from the process of being involved. And the reason I feel like I have so much success with this is why? Because I'm working with competitors who have this goal in mind. So when I tell them to make a small change, it's easy for them to do. Now, let me give you a, an example, a completely fictitious client. Let's say this client is a female competitor. She's on 140 grams of protein, 70 to 80 grams of carbs, and say 40 grams of fat, right? And that's not her refeed days. That is just her typical low day. And she's on, say, 45 to 60 minutes of cardio five times a week, right? This is very typical for someone getting close to a show. Well, what we might do for one week and I'll tell you when I use it, is we might bring the carbs up, bring the fats up just slightly, and bring the cardio down. 
And why does that work? Well, when you take the carb from say 100 to maybe 160, 170, you take the fat from 40 up to maybe 50, and you cut the cardio in say half, so from maybe 60 minutes to 30 or 45 to 20, 25, something like this, what you do is you essentially kind of restore some of the benefits of, of your hormones and you restore some things like sleep and you restore some of the processes that are going downhill in prep. So if you imagine you take one week with that approach. Now a lot of times what we do is a refeed day or multiple day refeeds during this process as well. But what a full week does is it just allows the body to reset, okay? So sleep is going to improve, you're gonna have less stress. We might even take a bit of a week off from training with so much intensity. We might do a deload or a taper week depending on where we're at in this phase. So we're just giving our bodies and our minds a break. Food comes up, activity goes down a little bit, but not so much that we risk putting on body fat. What typically happens during these phases is I would say, half the clients that I work with that do this are going to maintain their weight. Another maybe 15 to 20% are gonna gain a pound, maybe two, but there is a small, maybe 25% of them that will actually drop weight during the diet break week. And when that's the case, I'll actually extend it for another week based on where we are in the process because what's most important for a competitor is getting to that stage weight. So that's the caveat. When you have someone that is this dedicated, that is this focused on a goal like getting on stage and I add 60 or 70 carbs a day, the term diet break does not get overridden. I think sometimes with lifestyle clients or people that are just focused on fat loss, they take the word diet break and associate it with something like, okay, I'm just off my diet this week. I can kind of go back to normal behaviors. I can, you know, that's not the case. It has to be kind of rather specific. And there was a study that came out a while ago, I'll link it below, called the Matador study, where they actually showed that people that took diet breaks had more success in fat loss and more success after the dieting phase was over. So let's talk about the second thing that I wanna talk about that's making the post-diet recovery so much better. A lot is made of peak week plans and peaking going into a show. And what I typically see is a very restrictive approach. Low carb, low sodium, pulling out some water and going into the show just kind of very depleted and very run down. I take a completely different approach. Now, I don't do this with every single client, but I'd say the far majority are already stage lean and ready to go for this show. So the week of the show, we're actually keeping water and sodium pretty steady, we're, re we're walking carbs up every single day, and we're going into the show eating more food and having pretty normal behaviors to the point where when the show is over, we're not dealing with this innate desire to just cut loose, to go crazy with the food because we've been so restricted for 12 or 16 weeks. No, we've had multiple diet breaks. And there's actually some research that's very interesting that's coming out out of the University of South Florida. I had a client do a case study um, on her prep and we'll talk more about that in the future. But this is the inf information that I wanna get out now. I just wanna go on record and say if you're not using a diet break. If you're not familiar with diet breaks, this is a strategy that needs to be employed. Now the difficult part oftentimes is that we feel like we need to be pushing harder, harder, harder. But what I've found is that sometimes when you just pull back for that week, for that seven day period, maybe you make sure you have enough time and prep to add a diet break or two diet breaks. The results are much better in the short term, in the long term. Giving your body a chance to take a deep breath allows us to be successful for the long term. Now, how did I figure this out? Well, first of all, there's a lot of people a lot smarter than me in this world that are doing this type of research and I've heard about it from my contemporaries, but getting people to buy into this process has been difficult. So how did I kind of stumble across this in my practice? Well, what typically happens with competitors is we do more than one show. And what I kept noticing was that somebody would do a show and then the next week they would immediately feel better, look better, drop weight. Well, what was going on the week of the show? Basically, a diet break. I was pulling the cardio out, I was increasing the calories, and they were still very hyper-focused on being detailed. So going into the show, they felt better, they didn't have this urge to binge, and then they had another show afterwards, which helped keep them on track. So when I noticed this, and believe me, it took years to really pay attention to this, I started thinking, why? If this is resulting in a better athlete on stage, are we waiting until one week before the show to do this? Why not do this a few weeks before when they start to feel run down? And that's the key. When should we add a diet break, coach? 
Well, I really feel like diet breaks should be focused on periods where you're just starting to notice your performance in the gym is getting really bad, your mental clarity is not there, your work is starting to suffer. You might even be start questioning why you're doing this. Why am I dieting down? Why am I competing? I have all this other stuff going on. When you start to feel kind of these things pulling at you, that's a good indicator that we can go, okay, let's pull back, do a diet break, maybe take some time, a little bit of less cardio. You know, I usually say, you know, about 50% of the cardio that you were doing. Remember, it takes a lot more work to get lean than it does to stay lean. So you're not gonna put on body fat as long as you stay within like a normal range for where your carbohydrates and where your cardio should be. You're just going to feel better. And if you sleep better, well, maybe the cortisol comes down a little bit, maybe your metabolism kicks up a little bit, maybe you sleep a little bit longer, and you actually start to notice that you look better and the scale is stable or down while you're eating more food. Sometimes there can actually be some guilt associated with this. Two of my clients have told me, like, I feel bad, coach. I feel guilty, I'm not suffering enough. I'm all for suffering when the time is right, but I just wanna go on record and share this with you guys, that this is the biggest change in dieting that I have seen in my 10 years as a coach and as a competitor. And to the point last year I competed, I did two shows, one in August, one in October. And these diet breaks and these reversing into shows worked so well for me that I was able to maintain close to stage weight for months after the show to the point where I had to start adding food intentionally, which has never happened to me before. Previously, every time I prepped, I would wanna be up 20, 25 pounds within a month or two just to get myself back to normal. But I didn't have those urges. I felt great from using this method. And so it's just something I feel needs to get out there. More to come on this topic. And let me know if you guys have questions or you want more serious info on this. I'll try to link a video below um, in the comments where I explain more detail what a diet break is. But hopefully you guys enjoy this content and I'll talk to you tomorrow.